In this video, we are going to see how to bind form data to a model. As users enter the form data, we'll capture the changes and update an instance of the model that can later be sent to the server. Now the first step is to generate a model class. So open the integrated terminal, control backtick, run the command ng generate class and then the name of the class. Let's call it user. Let me make sure I navigate inside the project folder and then run the command. Let's open the file user.ts and let me copy paste the different properties of the user class. So the user has a name, email, phone, topic, time preference, and subscribe properties. Name is a string, email is a string as well, phone number is of type number, topic is a string, time preference is a string, and subscribe is a boolean. Now if you're wondering about the syntax, this is TypeScript's shorthand syntax for a constructor. TypeScript compiler generates a public field for each public constructor parameter and automatically assigns the parameter's value to that field when you create a new user. You should be familiar with the syntax if you worked with HTTP and services and injecting them using the constructor. All right, now that we have a model, the next step is to create an instance of this model. So open app.component.ts and over here, let's create a new property. Let's call it user model. This is going to be a new user and also make sure to automatically import user from the file. Now the first parameter is a name. Let's go with Rob. Email is going to be rob at test.com. A phone number, the topic, which I'm going to leave empty. Time preference, let's go with morning. And finally, we want the user to be subscribed to the promotional emails. By having this instance of the model, it is now possible to bind the user model data to our enrollment form. A simple use case for this would be updating or editing data that is already saved. For example, if you are on an e-commerce site and you have a shipping address, if you click on the edit button, a form appears pre-filled with the shipping address data. So the shipping address is bound to the form. As you can see, even though Angular creates its own object of the form values, there are definitely use cases where it is necessary to create our own model and bind that model data to the form. Let's do the exact same in our application. Let's see how to bind the user model to the enrollment form. I'm going to use interpolation to bind the user model and display it in the view. This will help us see how the data binding works. In the HTML, I'm going to add a horizontal line for separation and then user model in the JSON format. Now binding the user model to the form is really simple. We bind the properties of the model to the ng model directive. And for property binding, we make use of square brackets. So let's bind all the properties. So ng model is going to be replaced by a binding to user model dot name. Remember, square brackets for property binding. User model has a property called name, and we bind that to ng model of the name input element. Similarly, for email, ng model is equal to user model dot email. For phone, user model dot phone. For topic, 
ng model is equal to user model dot topic. And I am going to change selected to value is equal to empty. For the radio buttons, ng model is ng model user model dot time preference. And finally, for the checkbox, ng model is equal to user model dot subscribe. Now, if we take a look at the browser, you can see that Angular's form values are the same as user model's value. All the form controls are also pre-filled with the data set by the user model. Now let me change the name from Rob to Tim. When I do that, you can clearly see Angular's object has the updated value Tim, but the model still contains the old value of Rob. The reason is that we are using property data binding, which is one-way binding. So the data flows from the class to the view, but it does not flow from the view back to the class. So what we really want when working with forms is two-way binding. Two-way binding can be achieved with the banana in a box syntax of the ng model directive. So for each form control, change from square brackets property binding to banana in a box two-way binding. So parentheses inside square brackets. All right, so I have replaced all occurrences of property binding with two-way binding. Now, if we save this and go back to the browser, change the name from Rob to Tim, and you can see that both Angular's object and the model reflect the updated value. And it's the same with other type of controls as well. With two-way binding, we always have the model and view in sync. All right, so we have captured all the form data into a model which can now be sent to the server. However, before sending it to the server, it is crucial to perform client-side validation and provide useful visual feedback to the user. So in the next video, let's see how Angular makes it possible to validate forms with ease. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.